Good day, folks. Welcome to the MB Wildman channel. On today's video, just a real quick setup I want to show you here again today. And i uh, kind of been doing a series on some real, some real different type sets uh, that we do out here, or that I do, I guess. And uh, this one I call my post hole set. Now, I know there's a thousand videos on YouTube about how to do a dirt hole set and how to do it all right and prim and proper and all that. And you know what? You should watch those. Those are great sets and they take a lot of fur, but uh, I like to mix things up a little bit. I like to do some different sets. And especially out here in an area where I got a fair bit of competition uh, for fox and coyotes in the local area right here. Um, I want to do some different sets because you know what foxes and coyotes will eventually get used to you know kind of looking at dirt hole sets a little bit different and, and whatnot so anyway just a little mix up here a little little thought it mix it up a little bit this is uh, exactly what you'd see on a whole bunch of different farms around here this is just a cedar post cedar fence rail um, at one point there must have been a, a line of fence that divided this old pasture in half and uh, that's where I am I'm on an old piece of pasture ground here it's about 30-ish acres uh, between the old farmhouse up that way, main roads back this way. I got some woods in the background back here and uh, a couple of old cow paths going up the side here. Um, hasn't been cows in this field. I think the guy told me going on four or five years-ish since they had cows back here, but some of the old posts are still here. So this one's good and solid. I like to choose something. I like to pick something that's about at least, at least six or eight inches in diameter. Uh, to do this set okay so just stick with me here and I'm gonna show you real quick uh, real quick what this looks like this is mainly for fox and coyote you will catch sod raccoon in them and you may get lucky and smoke a bobcat along here but uh, for the most part this is fox and coyote um, it's what it's set up for okay so anyway listen if you haven't yet subscribed to the MB Wildman channel we sure would appreciate it and uh, if you got any questions comments you know anything like that go ahead and leave those in the comment section down below uh, follow us on Instagram if you like. We've got a Facebook page and all that. We're out for social media. I'm not really good at it, but uh, anyway, we got that stuff for those of you that are in the social media. All right, so first thing that I do uh, for this type of set is I've got my handy dandy little DeWalt 12 volt drill, and somewhere here, right here. So I've got this little one inch, let me show this to you. I've got this little one inch speed bit uh, that I use. Uh, I've used this for all kinds of different things, but this is, uh, this is pretty much what I use it for out on the trap line. So just swap that out. Okay, so just a little, little one inch speed bit. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up from the ground. So here's the pasture ground. I'm gonna come up here and I wanna be up at least, I'd say about three feet. So I wanna come up a good distance on the pole. I wanna be over top of a walking coyote or a walking fox's head, okay? So the idea here is that they gotta have their nose up, like way up, um, their chin up in order, to, uh, in order to smell or see, okay? So all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna drill a hole in this fence post um, on whichever side it's leaning. Now, I don't know about you, but here in New Brunswick, apparently it's uh, an impossibility to drive a fence post straight in the ground. So what I do is I pick whichever side it's leaning toward. So if this one happens to be leaning right toward you, 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 the guy in the camera right there looking at me. Okay, so it's leaning this way. And so I'm, that's the side I wanna, I wanna drill on, okay? I'm gonna go up just about three feet, maybe even three and a half, whatever. Wow, you know what? It's uh, really quite frozen right now. So this should be easier than this, but uh, here we are in, gracious, late December. So everything's pretty much froze up here. But anyway, beauty. Okay, now clean that out just a little tiny bit. Perfect. Okay, so uh, what I did was I drilled in the full depth see this or not I drilled in the full depth of my of my drill bit here okay so I've got uh, this inch wide auger is uh, about an inch and a half in length from here to here and so I drilled in there at least two two and a half inches into the post that's one of the reasons why I like to use something that's at least you know four or five six eight whatever inches in diameter because I'm gonna drill about halfway through it I don't want to damage something you know if the farmer ever wants to use this again I don't want my hole to be a problem but uh, this guy's not using these old posts again, so I'm all set. So you want to drill in there a good two, three inches if you can. 
All right, so once we're in there, that distance, all I'm gonna do now is uh, pick whichever trap I'm gonna use. Now, some guys will use cotton balls uh, for this next part. I don't uh, have a particular preference. I guess I use a lot of these blue shop towels. That I picked them up at Costco or wherever. So they're really supposed to be really good ones. You know, you can wring them out. They're like a paper towel on steroids. Um, I don't even know what they're called, shop towels, I think. But anyway, I use quite a few of them uh, around the skin and shed. So all I do is I soak my lure, whatever I'm gonna use for lure or bait, uh, I don't use bait, like meat bait or anything like that at these places. Whatever I'm going to use for lure, I soak that, right? I try to keep it off the ground if I can. I really don't want the, I really don't want the scent on the ground, okay? I want it on the pole, right? So, or on the, in the hole here. Okay, so soak my little cotton ball or rag or whatever, and I'm going to push it with a little stick as deep into that hole that I just drilled as I can get it. I'm going to push it way back in there. Right, you don't have to worry. A boxer or a coyote can smell that from, from a mile away, right? So that's what I've got done so far. And then all I'm going to do now is I'm going to bed my trap at the base of this post. Okay, so there's a million different ways to do this. Uh, there's a lot of good YouTube videos on exactly how to bed your traps and what to do. I will just recommend for you, and again, this is just personal preference, right? I just recommend whether you stake it down solid or whether you're going to use a drag or whatever you're going to do. What you want to do or what I do, especially for these sets, is I want to keep the set in tight to the post, okay, or pretty tight. I don't want it out here a foot or so because an animal can approach this from any different direction depending on which way the wind's going. You can see it's wide open. They could come in from the back, the front, the side, wherever. Um, I want to make sure I get a good front foot catch if I can get it. And so what I want to do is if you think about it, as this fox or coyote comes in with their head up, right, they're smelling at this hole. They're going to have to pretty much get right up to the post. I mean, they're going to have to walk right up so that they can get their chin and their nose up at this spot, okay? So they're gonna have to put their front feet really close to the post in order to get their nose up to be sniffing at this hole to figure out what's in there. So I wanna set my trap, I wanna bed my trap no farther out from the bottom of the post than about two, three inches would be the most, okay? You get outside of that and you're likely to have something step over or you're likely to have something, you know, spring it coming in from the side or whatever, okay? So however you're gonna bed your trap or however you're gonna stake your trap down, you just want it nice and easy right there. I'm gonna give you a close up view of this just in a second, but it's right here at the base. And then I cover it up with whatever's local. Okay, and I know a lot of guys will tell you don't put grass on top of your trap and all that stuff. Uh, as long as you, as long as you don't make long, long sprigs, as long as you break it up so that it's short. I don't usually have too many problems with pullouts, right? And I don't have to disguise that super, super well. Okay. So here's what I've got for a set. Right, got my my hole up here. At the base, there's my trap right there. You probably can't even hardly see it. Just a little bit of grass over top of it, not a big deal. It's set out. The pan is about three and a half-ish inches out from the bottom of the post. The inside jaw is only a couple inches out right there. And then of course I would have it, you know, staked down on a drag or a, or a staked down solid or whatever I choose to do on this one. So, uh, Anyway, listen, I hope this is something that you can uh, use out on your line. Hope it helps you out. Just uh, a real quick and easy set, especially if you've got area to some old pasture ground and old fence posts. You can set, you know, 
you can set a string of these. Uh, this actually, this old fence post, this line of fences, not sure if you can see it, but it goes, eh, it goes clear through there. I can see another six or eight posts right from here. And uh, if you're, you know, if you got the whole area to yourself and you're not worried about any competition or, or losing traps or anything, I mean, you could set every third post going up this line and you can take doubles or triples all day long, right, in these, in these old pasture fields. So anyway, listen, I uh, hope this helps you out, like I said, and uh, until next time, happy hunting from the MB Wildman channel.